So have you ever wanted to know how fast you're aging? Are you aging fast? Are you older than your actual biological age? Or are you younger? Well, today I'm going to find out how old I am, at least from the aging perspective. I've got here with me Tony Pemberton, and we're going to be discussing what needs to be done for me to get my biological age and my rate of aging. So you don't want to miss it. Keep watching. Right, I'm back with Tony Pemberton from Epic Genetics. We're going to discuss what it takes, the process, what it's like going through to to get uh, an idea of what my biological age is and, uh, and, uh, and epigenetic factors. So, hey, Tony, welcome again. Well, there, thanks for having me back. Right, so, yeah, what we're going to be talking about today is the True Diagnostic True Age Test. So, it is the most accurate biological age test on the market, the most advanced epigenetics that, that's currently out there. Okay, well, um, what's it going to tell me? What okay, so we've got all kinds of reports. We've got like looking at the omic M age, which is a, a new report that's only came out in October. It took three years to develop with Harvard, and it looks at thirty-eight different biomarkers that are the most linked to aging, and it's around ninety-two percent accurate of mortality in the next ten years. Which biomarkers are they then? Uh, oh, a couple of I know there's eighty. You don't have to go over all eighty, but just give me an example. So you've got things like hematocrit, you know, hemoglobin, okay. HB1AC. Okay. Um, yeah, all kinds of things. Uh, triglycerides. So we're going to do a blood test. So we oh. exactly. So it's uh, a few drops of blood. Okay. And it takes around two to three weeks once it gets into the lab to get the okay. results. And how is this different? Because we also do some of those biomarkers from full blood samples uh, compared to finger prick tests. So, so this is looking at certain genes that uh, the methylation patterns of those genes. So it tends to show longer trends of what's going on. Okay, so, so you got one, say, fasting blood glucose, but it's it's not obviously looking at your glucose that very day. It could have a small impact, but it's looking over long longer trends. Do the HbA one C or uh, both of them, yeah. Okay. All right. So it is also looking at the, the DNA from the blood sample. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Is it? Okay. All right, Colin, let's see what else you got. Okay. And then, so other reports, should we look at this one first? Yeah, let's yeah. look at this, so the omic. So the omic is the first test. Yeah. Typically, when you're younger, you come in a bit older than your chronological age. It's a very linear curve. Okay. And at current, I'm in the 80th percentile. When, when I last did this test, this was approximately about four and a half months before this one, and I was coming in around 83rd or so. So I've managed to reverse my omic age over that period of time. And then this is looking at things like risk of death, cancer so at the moment. So it's looking at it based off what the average 37-year-old, what their risk of death is, okay. so a relative risk, if you see what I mean. So how are you? It's got 63.634. Just general death. That's that's the chance of death uh, compared to someone of my age. So that's a relative risk. Okay, you know what I mean, yeah, yeah. So this risk is still quite low. It's it not doesn't, like doesn't, doesn't look great though. It, it says disease risk is sixty three point six three percent. Yeah. Okay. In three years, eight point nine four percent. Does it? Yeah. It's if you reverse your age, yeah, and it yeah it takes. Oh, it decreases the amount. Yeah. Okay. So men typically these are all biomarkers that uh, have a big impact on it, and being male actually has has an impact so so you get less life span out of being ill yeah physical activity is positive higher education even has an impact smoking obviously is not good bmi of course okay and then there's certain when you look at it this is even because these biomarkers have different impacts so for heart disease some biomarkers are particularly uh damaging for your heart whereas some might be more related to cancer yeah. there's a big graph of showing which ones are more effective and then Look at these are all the different biomarkers relating to different bodily systems. Okay. And these are the the weightings of these biomarkers. So red cell uh, um, distribution width is okay. that's actually the highest impacting one. Okay. So it, so it sounds like even though they're similar biomarkers to some of the tests that we do at Balance of Hormones, these are looking more um, in a report how they uh, impact your longevity and, exactly, your, yeah. and your risk is that they've looked at many different biomarkers and these are the 38 that they've narrowed down that have like the strongest link to longevity okay and so red cell distribution width is by far in these um but then they also give you the benefit of comparing you to your peers or comparing yeah exactly okay. and then the 80th percentile that's looking at 
true diagnostic customers and then their demographic is typically a lot healthier than the average population. So in in the Harvard cohort, they were saying that I would be more like in the maybe 30th or 20th percentile in that kind of region for health. Is this the test that's going to tell me how uh, much older or younger I am compared to my chronological age? Exactly. The, the omic test is the most accurate okay. ever, that's ever been created. And then okay. so it's looking at, uh, yes, all these different biomarkers. There's also the true age pace test, which is looking at your speed of aging. And right. again, that's that's super accurate for for seeing if there's a, like a change in your body. So if you were to quit smoking within eight weeks, you could actually start to see your pace of aging go down. slow down. And it, it's meant to be. And, and it's based on these biomarkers as the true age have a different test. Uh, yeah, so it's looking at different methylation patterns. So they, they, each epigenetic clock out there has different strengths and weaknesses. Okay. But the, the omic is meant to be the, the best one so far. And then the, the pace of aging is yeah up, up there as well. Okay. All right. So are we going to do the test now? Or is, is there a kit? Or do I have to send away for this? Or? Yeah, you'll have to send away for Okay, it, yeah. fine, fine, fine. Yeah, it's, uh, I, don't, I don't know if you're scared of finger pricks. No, no, we've got some yeah. test kits here, actually. Uh, yeah. <laughs> we could use. Yeah, then you need to have the right sampling device. So it's on. Mm, does, yeah. does it go on paper? Or does it go on paper? Yeah, yeah. Okay. And some people want to use a tasso to. They don't like to get it. We, we've finger. got a tasso here as well. So tasso is a device that goes on your arm, and, and uh, we'll probably demo it in another video. But yeah, is it looking at metabolites? So you're either deficient in or need more of. And then for myself, it pointed out that uridine. I don't know if you're familiar with that. Uridine? Uridine, that molecule. Yeah. Yeah. In my previous one, I was around 20%. Uridine is positive. It incre- Well, it lowers your biological age. And my, I was coming in at quite low for uridine. So I started supplementing it and then I've increased my level. Okay. It's the same with lutein, you know, the yellow carotenoid. Yeah. It helps prevent uh, macular degeneration. Mm. And I was coming in quite low. And then that was something. So I've been supplementing that. So essentially this shows you where you're deficient or could be deficient and then you... There are maybe supplements that you can take to increase those. So you've got uh, yeah. plasma logins. That's kind of a new concept of aging. Plasma logins are those um, the kind of a lipid that they may be related to age issues. Mm. So if you have low plasma, we, they think as you get older, uh, you have less plasma logins than when you were younger. And then that acetate, that kind of, I think that was coming a bit higher last time. So it's a sign that, yeah, maybe I was having some kidney stress. Okay. So being working on my hydration, I managed to. Your cysteine levels were on the lower side, so that and cysteine we, does affect your glutathione. Yeah, and so that and that's a positive thing. So yeah, it's getting it down is actually good. So yeah, androsterone sulfate that actually relates to your actual uh, testosterone here. Yeah, it's a precursor. Yeah, and then since I was not actually on TRT when I last did the test, it was um, did the test uh, right at the end of being on a TRT washout. So and this number has actually come up quite a lot. I do a blood spot test. I'll get the kit at home. Yeah. Um, We'll order that. I'll get the blood spot test. I'll, I'll follow the instructions and then send it away. Then how long does it take to get the results back? Uh, it's around two to three weeks. Okay. And then two to three weeks, it will give me this report. And then I would work with you and you tell me what it says or... Yeah. So I'd look at all those different biomarkers and then see there's sometimes they overlap and there's kind of just being able to connect the dots and just see what areas that you can work on, the okay. things that will make the biggest difference to your speed of aging. Okay. Sounds good. Uh, any, any other tests that that's incorporated into here? Yeah, so this is just a summary of the report. So it's kind of just giving a like a an overview of them. So that was that omic age one, and then this is the speed of aging. So since my last one, I was aging 0.91 per chronological year. So I was getting effectively around about a month for free. Okay. And then in the space of these four and a half months, I've got it down to 0.84. So now about two months free a year that I'm okay. kind of not aging. And then if you look here, the the actual these are all people. They this this study was one of the, the biggest studies using epigenetics. So they monitored people over fifty years, like biobank data okay. in a town called Danundin, that's where it gets its name from, a thousand participants. And they're looking at the fastest aging versus the slowest aging. Oh yeah. And then you can see they're but all forty five years old, but you can see that the difference yeah, they're, in their face. Yeah, they're a lot older, some of them. Yeah, so it really does reflect your inner health, really does impact your external uh, health. So, yeah, it looks like, uh, I mean, this is a nice test to find out. Um, tell me about the methylation report. What, so, 
Which one is a methylation report? Is it the first one, the OMIC? Yeah, I mean, they're all looking at methylation, but they're just looking at different different sites, methylation sites. So what is methylation? So that's a process of where your genetic sequence, certain genes are being turned off or turned on. So okay. when they're being turned off, the gene is methylated. Right. Certain genes you do want turned off and certain genes you want on. So you've got, say, tumor suppressing genes, so you definitely want to keep them on. That's why if you're unhealthy, then eventually those genes can get turned off. And is this just for people in the UK or...? It's worldwide, yeah. So through your company, you can deal with them worldwide? Yeah. Not just the UK, okay. And then you've got like an immune system report. Since doing this test, I've managed to reverse my immune system age from I was around 28, and now I'm down to 25 years old. Okay. So I'm a little bit, when it comes to winter, I'm a little Wait, bit less worried about... But you're also using rapamycin? Yeah, that's right, yeah. Okay, so how does that affect your immunity? Because normally rapamycin is used for people who... It quiets down the immunity who have uh, transplants. Yeah, and so inversely, because there's there's been one human trial with it where it's actually shown it actually can have, in small doses, it can have the opposite effect, actually increasing your immune system. I think they, they believe it's from immunosenescence, so basically it's killing off those senescent immune cells. Okay, so the cells that are just hanging about but not doing anything and they're clogging up the yeah. system. So it's, it's interesting with rapamycin that where they found it in the soils off of Easter Island... Mm. When they were sampling, and they found that this particular substance had some some beneficial properties and was used, then eventually for um, uh, transplants. So, and now some people are using it in the in the anti aging space, which is still quite in a in a not a gray area, but an area where it's not completely recognized by the the mainstream health, mm. health system. But then, what is half the time? Sure. There's twenty or thirty years behind. Uh, yeah. I believe there are some doctors who are now prescribing it for anti aging. I'm not sure more. No, but what, in, in the in the traditional medical side of things, many there's lots of discrimination, gaslighting. I've said stigma around anyone that tries to improve their health, and I think that that's changing, especially in the U.S. But okay. but it, it depends on on you know who you talk to, and, and some doctors will just say you know just just be happy aging, just be happy. Mm. Uh, why do you want to? To, to be younger. This is just the natural process of things. Cult. Yeah, I mean, the thing is, but then what is natural these days because we're bombarded with a food that we wouldn't have seen thousands of years ago. People eat more sugar in one day. Quite, It's quite common for people to do that than what our ancestors would have eaten in a whole lifetime. So you think if you've got mTOR, you know, the growth pathway that's firing all the time, then yeah. it's not natural that your body would have that happening. So it's something that's inhibiting mTOR, you know, in some scenarios could be beneficial. So it's about, I guess, living better, healthily. I, I suppose this is why people will do, you know, TRT is just one component of it and having the information behind you can, can make a big difference in, in making certain lifestyle changes for that. So oh, this is, I'm excited. That's, um, I'm looking forward to getting my test done. The immune system report, telomere length. So okay. telomeres is how long your chromosomes, the end yeah. of your chromosome. So my, I did a, a, the test through nebula, uh, nebula Health and it said that I should have extra long telomeres. Uh, okay. Telomeres for for my G and my G's, whether those are turned on or not, I guess yeah. this will tell me. Yeah, we'll so. find out. Yeah, and then you got type two diabetes report, so I've got no no risk of type two diabetes. So will this say through my genetics is telling me this? Exactly through yeah. the uh, the the test of my HbA one C. It's through yeah through a certain gene. The, okay, these, these um, CPGs, these these genes, right. and it'll yeah tell you what level of risk you are, how methylated these protective genes are. And then you've got inflammation. Inflammation. So this is looking at DNA methylation. For CRP. CRP. So it's that C-reactive protein. Yeah. yeah. And then this but one that's is not as specific as other other like interleukin six and yeah, you've got IL six here yeah, as well. Okay. well. What about IL twenty? No, no so that's got these. IL twenty might be linked to cancer. Okay, well, they, yeah, yeah. For, the, for the cancer, we've got the mitotic clock. So that's okay. looking at stem cell divisions. So you really want to keep it kind of, well, if you're getting up into the 80s or 90th percentile, then that could be some some kind of sign that, you know, there's internal growth happening. Okay, interesting. So then it'd be, that would be the opportunity. It's not a, no, by no means a diagnosis, right. but able to get a liquid biopsy to see why you're going through so many stem cells. Okay. And then you've got a bit of stage report. So it's looking at grip strength and... You've got gait speed. How, how will it look at grip strength on the blood test? How does it look at... Again, yeah, it's uh, looking at certain genes that relate to grip strength. Okay. And then, interesting, my went down a little bit from my previous one. Uh, the My gait speed stayed 
the same pretty much all went up slightly mine was 55 before but my grip strength went down and i think what happened was i was i think it, it responds fairly quickly i think my by trying to not have too much inflammation because i just overtrain okay. sometimes i think maybe my grip strength went down because i just had a period of rest before. right so what so it's... when would be the best time to to take this test and when after I, I recovered and had a rest from from training for a few days yeah, I'd say it's safer, yeah, just at least have at least maybe a couple of days okay, off. So don't so. do a really heavy workout session, a training session, and then do the do the test. Just wait yeah, on, then, on your two day offs part. Yeah, or, or have like, I wouldn't go out for a big buffet meal the day before because say with that pace of aging, that's, it can pick up changes in a little as eight weeks. Okay. If you were to over bloat yourself and then it could maybe have a little bit of an impact on it. And the time of day when you do the test, is it better in the morning or is um, it uh, there, there is, yeah, better fasted? Yeah, I think typically they said any time of the day, but now they've introduced the fasting glucose, it could have a small impact. Okay, For those yeah. looking at long patterns, it can still have a small impact okay, on it, so it's better to have a stable kind of condition. It's got another couple of interesting areas they look at is smoking and uh, drinking report. So got no epigenetic risk of smoking, so always kind of maintain in that area. Because obviously, if you, you don't smoke, yeah. No, I did a little bit when I was a teenager, yeah. so there's probably a tiny bit of damage, but I think generally you can you can recover most of it. You yeah. never quite completely repair those genes, but there is some damage. Absolutely. And then you've got the drinking one, so it looks at how many times it can work out how often you drink. And then you've got a weight loss response report. So me, every gene is hypomethylated, so I'm not a good responder to uh, as a weight loss, but it typically relates to. Well, having... you wouldn't be able to tell looking at you. you exactly, yeah. like you responded quite well. Well, well that, that, that that's what it is. So it's looking yeah. at you've got a lot of fat to still burn. You'll pretend to be a hyper responder to your lean okay. more towards that way because I've not got much left. It's uh, yeah, I'm a no responder now. Yeah. Otherwise, it'd be waste away to nothing. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So intrinsic epigenetic age. So this is the. The magic number we're looking for? Yeah, so this is the old report they're looking at. This is this is like okay. a Gen 1 clock. And then and then you've got the ex extrinsic, which relates to your immune system. And then they've got a separate immune system report where it can actually break down what specifically, say if you've got like high amounts of natural killer cells, all these different things and what ways to improve certain immune system areas. But mine, over a period of these five months, it's a, I've actually, this, this just gives you an overall number. And then so my... Age has gone from 28.2 to pretty much bang on 25. Okay. So I'm kind of way quite a bit below the uh, the average. So that's good. Your extrinsic epigenetic age if you're on the lower end. Because you're on the you're saying you're closer to um 30 something, isn't it? Yeah. So like yeah, so I've got 12 year kind of age deltas. So it's saying that your age will be about 25. Yeah. But you're actually 37. Exactly, yeah. It's your chronological age. So, yeah. so you want to be on that lower side of it. Okay. Well, hopefully mine's similar. <laughs> well, it is <laughs> gross. Yeah. yeah. I think we're offering a, a discount code or for those who want to order this this test. What what, what code is that? So that's BMH10. Okay, so BMH10 and then there's about 10% off? Exactly, yeah. 10% off the, the, the cost of the test. So if anyone who's watching that wants to order a, a test this is global around the world use that code and we'll put the link of where to, where to find it put the bmh10 and then we can know whether or not you've seen it through watching our video but um yeah thanks tony we'll have a follow-up to this or we'll incorporate this into the main video when when i get my results and we can go over that so yeah uh, yeah look forward to seeing your yeah. results yeah thank you we've barely scratched the surface for your hormonal health if you like content like this check out our other videos that discuss hormone health and optimization. And for future content, please hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so you don't miss anything to your health and optimal hormones. See you next time. This is Mike.